Hello. In my last class, we discussed the operation of bipolar junction transistor. A SCR, a track, and a GTO. They are latching devices. The continuous gate drive is not required during on period. Whereas a BJT requires a continuous base drive during the on time. Okay. And in order to reduce the turn on time, which is the sum of delay time plus the rise time, a high value of IBS recommended. And as the transistor turned on, in the sense after the T on, this IB is reduced automatically. See the waveform looks something like this. A high value of IB during on time, okay. And after that, it has reduced. And this value is approximately 1.5 times this. Okay. And second point that we discussed was a BJT should not be operated in saturation. Because if you operate in saturation, VC may be very low, but then the storage time increases. And therefore, the total time required to turn off the device also increases. And that limits the frequency of operation. So therefore, the BJT is invariably operated in quasi-saturation region. So by operating the device in quasi-saturation region, there will be a slight increase in VCE. And therefore, device on state losses. But then there is a significant reduction in the storage time. Another point that we made was that if the transistor is operated in saturation while turning off a high value of minus IB should not be applied to the base. It should be a gradual increase towards minus IB, something like this. A positive IB to minus negative IB, it should be gradual. Okay. How do you ensure the transistor always operates in quasi saturation region? Because load on the transistor can vary, load is invariably an independent variable. Whereas, the base drive is designed in such a way that the required current flows into the base for the rated current. Now, if the load on the transistor reduces, transistor may operate in saturation. So, how will you ensure the transistor always operates in quasi saturation region? Uh, using a Becker clamp, okay, it can be ensured that transistor always operates in quasi saturation region. So, this is the Becker clamp. By connecting a suitable number of diodes in series with D2, D3, You can clamp VCE to a required value. Okay. This D1 generally operates like a control wall. It is because, see, VC is strength to fall in the sense during saturation VC decreases. The moment VC decreases below a certain value, D1 turns on and when D1 turns on, a part of IB gets diverted. Okay. 
So there is a reduction in the current flowing into the base. Okay. Now as VCE increases, D1 turns off. Okay. So therefore now all the base current or IB starts flowing into the base. So D1 a functions like a control valve. It opens when this voltage falls below a certain value and it closes when this voltage increases the above value. Okay. What is the other point that we discussed? Transistor is a minority carrier device. It has a negative resistance coefficient and therefore a paralleling is difficult. And the safe, operati safe operating area has a limit which is governed by the secondary breakdown. See here, AB is the maximum current it can carry, BC is the maximum power that it can dissipate, CD is due to the secondary breakdown and DE is the maximum voltage it can withstand. Okay. And I told you that if the transistor is on for a very short duration, the boundary of SOA expands. Okay. It's a dotted line for a very low or very short on time. Okay. I said BJT requires continuous base drive. In SCR, we had used a pulse transformer to isolate the control circuit from power circuit. SCR requires just a sharp pulse, but then we fed a large number of high frequency pulses and we used a pulse transformer to isolate them. Now, I told you that pulse transformer works like a differentiator okay? because if I give a broad pulse to the primary of the pulse transformer, I will get a sharp pulse at the rising edge and another pulse at the falling edge okay? because in this region, a transformer may get saturated and if it gets saturated, there is no voltage at the secondary. But then this pulse may be sufficient to trigger a thyristor. Since it is a latching device, you do not require a continuous pulses. BJT requires continuous gate drive and again I, there has to be an isolation between power circuit and control circuit. Now which device shall we use? So we can use what is known as an opto isolator, opto isolator. So it is here, this dotted line or whatever that is there inside the dotted line is an opto isolator. A diode, maybe a photodiode or some, okay, when it is on, okay, this transistor turns on, okay. So this is the control circuit, this side is the control circuit, okay, where in this side is the power circuit to the gate drive circuit and to the base. Okay. Now as long as this diode is on, this transistor also is on. Okay. Now but then what is the disadvantage? The moment I use a transistor, okay, you require a, a biasing voltage, VCC you require, a supply voltage you require, okay. wherein this VCC is not required in the case of uh, SCR. Okay. 
Now, if there are large number of transistors in that circuit, okay, your entire gate drive circuit may become bulky because as the number of optocouplers increases, and each optocoupler, each optocoupler, the secondary stage requires it a supply. Okay. So, the overall base drive circuit may become bulky. I will just show you the characteristics of a, a BU 208D transistor. It was quite popular maybe in the 1990s or so. Okay. See the rating VCEO is 700 volts. See, see VEBO base emitter voltage is 10 volts, emitter base voltage 10 volts, whereas VCEO is 700 volts. Collector current 8 amperes and peak collector current is 15 amperes, maybe for a very short duration. I said base emitter junction in a BJT is highly doped. So, it cannot withstand reverse voltage. Okay. So, in the forward direction it can withstand 700 volts, whereas in the reverse direction it can withstand a very low voltage because base interjunction junction is very highly doped. Okay. See, VC is at on state collect emitter saturation voltage for IC is equal to 4.5 amperes and base current of 2 amperes it could be 1 volt, 1 volt. So, the power loss is VCE that is 1 into IC 4.5 watts and some typical values of storage, storage time TS and fault time. See, storage time is of the order of 7 microsecond and fault time is of the order of 550 nanoseconds. Okay. See, the safe operating area, IC limit, power dissipation limit. Okay. See, as, see, this is for continuous and for a very short duration the value increases okay. and see the current gain again it is not constant it is a function of collector current and again a function of junction temperature also. So, at 25 degrees junction temperature the variation is something like this and for 125 degrees. Okay. So, what is the problem with the bipolar junction transistor? Take for example, the transistor that I showed you just now BU208D, VCEO is of the order of 700 volts, IC around 8 amperes. And at 5 amperes, HFE, the gain is 5 approximately. So, how much a base current that you require? It is 1 ampere. Okay. Now, I told you that in order to reduce that on time, we have to supply a higher value of IB. So, the base current during starting could be of the order of say 1.5 amperes. Now, this 1.5 amperes current definitely TTL circuits cannot supply. So, definitely you need to use a, a small power transistor to supply a BU 5 naught or BU 2 naught 8D transistor. I will repeat, the base current is of the order of 1.5 amperes. 
Now, which device can supply this much of current? Definitely, I need to use a, an, a small power transistor to drive a BU208D. So, see just that is what I made a sentence here, a small PT, a power transistor to drive another power transistor. Okay. How do I protect the BJT from overload? How do we protect the equipments from overload, the electrical equipments? We use a fuse. Okay. But then this fuse cannot protect the power semiconductor devices. So these are not fast enough. Okay. Invariably, almost all the electromechanical equipments, they have a higher overload capacity. Take for example, induction machine. When you directly start online, it can carry six times the rated current. Say, B U phi not or B two not eight D transit that I showed you just now. Current maximum current rating was what is that? See, collector current value is eight amperes, and the peak is for 15 amperes, it starts for a very short duration. So, definitely fuse cannot be used to protect a BJT okay. and the overload capacity is not much higher than the rated steady state capacity. So, therefore, it is necessary to detect an overcurrent and remove the base drive immediately. So, the moment a overload situation is detected, transistor should be turned off. Okay. So, I have written here, it is necessary to detect an overcurrent condition and remove the base drive immediately. Why? They do not have a higher overload capacity, it is not much higher than the rated steady state capacity. Now, how will you incorporate this? See, I have just shown a typical gate drive circuit. I have not given you the details. Okay. A Becker clamp, okay, which ensures the transistor always operates in quasi saturation region or at a required value, or VC is maintained at a required value. Here are the digital circuits. Okay, which generate the switching logic or switching signals to the transistor. Now, you need to isolate them. So, we have to use a, a opto isolator. Assume that this power transistor is supplying a load and I have connected that load in the emitter. a reasonably high voltage that depending upon the load requirement okay, is connected to the collector and VC should able to withstand this high voltage. Okay. So, here is a, a driver circuit. Okay. So, when the transistor is to be turned on, this diode turns on and therefore, this the transistor which is there in the opto isolator turns on and this driver circuit supplies a positive IB to the gate. Okay. And I have used a plus 12 volt supply to this driver circuit. You may require a minus 12 also. I have not given you the all the details of the driver circuit. I just want to tell you how a BJT can be protected from overload condition. This is a required IB that is supplied to the gate. 
and VCE false. Okay, VCE attains VC is the required value. Okay, at after say T D plus T R or after T on time. Now, how do I protect the BJT from overload condition? Or in other words, how do I detect the overload condition? During overload condition, the collector current increases. Okay. Collector current increases above the rated value. So, what happens? Transistor starts operating or getting into active region. It starts to come out of saturation now. Because IB that is flowing, that is for a rated current. Now, current is higher than the rated. Okay. So, as the transistor comes out of quasi saturation, VCE increases. The VCE is high when the transistor is in blocking mode. VCE falls to a very low value when the device is turned on. Okay. And in the on period, it continues to remain at a very low value. And in case if there is an overload, VCE starts increasing. Okay. And this situation or this condition should be detected and immediately transistor should be turned off. Now, how do you detect this overload condition? that can be detected by monitoring the potential at point Y. Okay. The potential of point Y when this diode is conducting okay, is VCE plus this drop. Okay. I will repeat potential of Y is V C E plus the drop across D Y. Okay. That is when D Y is conducting. And what is V C E? when the device is on, it is V x minus V d 1. So, in case potential of y increases above this value that V c e plus V d y, where, I, where V c is V x minus V d 1, it indicates that is a fault condition or is a overload condition. See, when the diode is off, what is the potential of Y? Potential of Y is 12 volts because no current is flowing. So, it is like this potential of y also will be just like this. It is 12 volts till the transistor is turned on. Under normal condition, it is VCE plus this drop. What is this? This normal condition. In case if this increases, it is a overload condition. So, therefore, by monitoring the voltage at point Y can be inferred that whether the transistor is operating in quasi saturation or it is trying to come out of quasi saturation can be inferred. Okay. And let me tell you one thing, this comparison should be done only after say T on 
see we have to you have to apply positive iv to the transistor wait for some time only then the voltage at point y or vce falls okay so till this period even if vc is high no action should be taken okay action should be taken only when vc increases in this region so that's about protecting a bjt from overload condition now i just want to tell you about a floating ground okay now what is a floating ground see in this circuit all the control signals that applied to the bjt with respect to its emitter with respect to its emitter okay so this potential is at 12 volts with respect to emitter okay now what is the potential of emitter the potential of emitter is is equal to the potential of the collector that is equal to the high voltage when the transistor is on because when the transistor is on vc drops to a very low value this potential is same as the emitter potential okay and in this circuit when the transistor is off okay it is assumed that no current flows i am neglecting the leakage current so potential of e is zero so i have a reference point in the circuit whose potential is keep on changing and depends on the conducting state of the transistor okay i said this potential is at 12 volts with respect to emitter and potential of this point itself is equal to a high voltage potential this voltage when the transistor is on so a precaution to be taken is that just because a 12 volts is being used in the drive circuit one should not touch the components in the drive circuit because the potential itself is floating say is a collector is connected to a 400 volts dc supply okay so at any given time the potential in the drive circuitry could be 400 volts or so because emitter potential itself is changing okay whereas whereas this digital circuits okay there are also supply voltages are there say plus 5 minus plus 5 or plus 12 depending upon the logic circuits that are used here and this is the actual ground this is the actual ground mind you this ground and this ground they are not the same they should not be connected should not be connected because this is the entire power circuit power circuit okay and this is a opto isolator to isolate the power circuit from the driver circuit and potential in this part is floating floating with respect to emitter yes these are at maybe at 12 volts but then emitter potential itself is changing okay so that's about bipolar junction transistor okay now let us discuss another device what is known as the power mosfet see here metal 
ऑक्साइड सेमीकंडक्टर फील्ड इफेक्ट ट्रांसिस्टर मॉस फैट मेटल ऑक्साइड सेमीकंडक्टर फील्ड इफेक्ट ट्रांसिस्टर ओके इस वर्स डेवलप्ड इन 1978 ए 100 वोल्ट 25 एम्पीयर पावर मॉस फैट As of now, in the market, say 200 volt, 500 ampere MOSFET is available. It's manufactured by Semicron. Or say 60 volts, 1000 ampere Semicron MOSFET is available. Okay. So generally, generally MOSFETs are a low voltage high current devices these are so that's why they are very popular in a pile electronic equipment which converts a dc to another dc value is something known as a dc to dc conversion we will study sometime later these are very popular in the dc to dc power conversion these are really a fast devices, very fast devices compared to a BJT. BJT is a minority carrier device, whereas a MOS is a majority carrier device. Like similar to a BJT, it is a non-latching device, it is a non-latching device. Okay. See here, the symbolically can be represented in this manner. Okay. D stands for drain, G stands for gate and S stands for source. Okay. So, this potential is V G S, gate to source. VDS drain to source, drain to source. Okay, remember it is a majority carrier device. Okay, let us see the structure. How does it look like? Drain. Okay, immediately there is a n plus layer, and there is an n minus layer to block the forward voltage. There is a P layer and a N plus layer. Okay. And this is the source. Okay. Here is the gate and in between the gate and the source there is silicon dioxide SiO2, SiO2 which is an insulator, this is an insulator. Okay. So, in principle you cannot have any current flow between gate and source because there is a insulator in between. Okay. And if at all the current flows a very small current will flow. A MOSFET has a very high input impedance and it is mainly a capacitive type, capacitive type, a very high input impedance. Okay. So, gate power requirement is very small, very small. Okay. Now, just see the structure, source and drain source is yes, drain is D here and see the here is a, a diode NP okay. and again a PN, PN. So, it appears as though there cannot be any flow of current between drain to source. 
because at any given time one of the diodes is reverse biased if i connect source negative okay and make drain positive this diode is reverse biased and vice versa so how does the current flow the gate is insulated from the rest of the device so if at all if the current flows it is in microamperes again no steady current okay there is some sort of a displacement current now as in the case of a parallel plate capacitor okay so mosfet is in set to be in cut off when a gate to source voltage is less than a threshold value okay so i'll repeat mosfet is in cut off when a gate to source voltage is less than a threshold value now what happens when the when the gate to source voltage is higher than the threshold value the layer between the silicon a small channel is formed just below the silicon layer see convert silicon surface below the gate into an n type channel so i'll show you in the figure when the gate to source voltage is higher than the threshold a small channel below the silicon surface forms okay so electron starts flowing in this manner or the current starts flowing in this manner so when this voltage increases above a threshold value a small channel is formed below the silicon so electron starts flowing in this manner now this threshold value depends on the oxide layer si2 layer and it can be reduced by reducing the thickness okay now when vgs the gate to source voltage is higher than the threshold value device is driven into ohmic region so in a transistor also we had cut off active and saturation even in mosfet we have three regions cut off ohmic and active so i'll show you this is a cut off mode when vgs gate to source voltage is less than the threshold okay see this region is the ohmic region okay also known as the linear region okay see these are the various plots for the various values of gate to source voltages okay id versus the the drain to source voltage okay so as gate to source voltage increases you have a higher value of id the region be between these two zones is almost linear the characteristics is almost linear okay hence the name ohmic okay whereas in active region id is remains almost constant independent of vds the voltage between drain to source and depends only on vgs okay so in active region we can say that 
current is saturated so is also known as the saturation region see just the opposite you know, bjt bjt this is supposed to be a active or linear region this was saturation but region was not that broad so we are calling linear region as ohmic region active as saturation when is in ohmic the device is driven into ohmic region when gate to source voltage minus vgs threshold is higher than vds drain to source and is higher than zero so in the ohmic region vds is low is low so how do i represent the mosfet in ohmic zone or ohmic region characteristics is similar almost linear can i represent it by a register yes in on state the channel of the device behaves like a resistance rds on rds on it is a slope of is the slope of vds a slope of vds versus id characteristics okay this is rds on and so therefore what is the conduction power loss or power loss during conduction it was equal to vce into ic in the case of transistor in the case of a mosfet it is id squared the drain current multiplied by rds on rds on and this loss is higher than vce into ic in the case of a bjt vc is sat into ic in the case of a bjt see bjt requires a, a continuous base current okay that's what i said a small power transistor is required to drive another power transistor okay but then it has a substantially lower voltage drop when the bjt is in conduction mode compared to a mosfet okay now see the structure again we have a npn transistor npn transistor how do i or eliminate the effect of this transistor what did i do here i have shorted this n layer and p layer by the source now the structure is looking something like this base and emitter they are shorted okay but then there is a diode there is a diode in the reverse fashion see the current is flowing from drain to source okay even if i short this diode there is a diode what is known as the body diode which is connected in the reverse fashion the cathode is connected to drain anode to the source okay so symbolically it is looks something like this this is the mos okay and here is the body diode this exists there so mos can block a positive voltage ds d should be positive with respect to the source you can't make 
d negative s positive because the moment you make we have an uncontrolled element here a diode so this cannot block a negative voltage okay but then it can carry the current in both directions drain to source and source to drain okay so positive current mosfet carry, carries and negative current the body diode carries so this diode has adequate current rating and a switching speed i told you mosfet is a really a fast device okay is a majority carrier device because when the gate threshold gate to source voltage is higher than the threshold a n channel is formed below the silicon surface and the electron starts flowing okay there are no minority carriers okay it is only a majority carrier device okay is a very fast device this is a body diode has a adequate current rating also has adequate switching speed but then in certain application power electronic application if you require a very fast diode the effect of body diode is eliminated by connecting a diode in series with the drain okay so by connecting a diode in this fashion now this diode cannot carry the current the direction of current is going to be in only one direction okay and a separate a high frequency diode is connected in this fashion okay so that's about the mosfet structure how does the safe operating area of a mos look like bjt we had ic limit vce limit pj limit or junction temperature limit and there the fourth one was a secondary breakdown because of the local hot spots it has negative temperature coefficient so there could be some local hot spots and there is a limit in the safe operating area a mosfet is a majority carrier device it has a positive temperature coefficient so paralleling is easy why see i have connected two devices in parallel they have positive temperature coefficient assume that temperature has increased therefore the resistance increases so if the resistance increases two devices in parallel current that is flowing through the device comes down so current through the current flowing through the device has come down so temperature reduces so paralleling of mos is easier because they have a positive temperature coefficient now since it has a positive temperature coefficient so there is nothing like a secondary breakdown in mosfet okay so therefore safe operating area there are only three limits so there are ab is the drain current maximum drain current okay cd is the maximum voltage the device can block and bc is the maximum power dissipation okay and this is imposed by rds on i told you that when the mos is in the ohmic region or in the linear region it can be represented by a resistor the slope of the characteristics so 
I D squared into R D S is the on state power loss. So B C this region, this region is imposed by or R D S on. Okay. Now coming to the internal capacitance of the MOS. I told you that gate is insulated from source as well as the drain. It is insulated. So if I can apply a voltage, a small leakage current can flow. So in principle, I can represent it by a, a capacitor. So therefore, there are three types of capacitors. One is, see in this fashion, gate to source, CGS, so this capacitor, CGS. What is the dielectric for this capacitor? It is an oxide layer isolating gate and the source. Okay. And this value is almost independent of the variations in VDS, drain to source voltage. I will repeat, gate to source capacitance is almost independent of VDS. Okay. How about other two capacitors? C, G, D, capacitance between gate to drain. It is a strong function of drain to source voltage. See here. Gate to drain capacitance varies considerably with V, D, S. Okay. So, this is the variation. Okay. For low values of VDS, or that happens when the device is on, this capacitance is high. Okay. And it is in the blocking mode, at that time VDS is very high, this capacitance is very small. Okay. See, when I see this gate to source remains approximately constant, independent of VDS, whereas gate to drain, it has a high value when the device is on and it has a very low value when the device is off. Okay. And the third one between a drain and source is of less important. Okay. Now, the sum of capacitance between gate to drain and gate to source is known as the input impedance. Gate to drain and gate to source is the input capacitance and see the variation here is the sum of these two, sum of these two. Okay. And it generally in terms is in picofarads. And this impedance, this capa input capacitance is plays a, a very important role while turning on the MOS and turning off the MOS. So during turn on, you need to charge these two capacitors, gate to drain and gate to source. The rate at which you charge this capacitors determines the turn on time of the MOSFET. Okay. With that, I will conclude my today's lecture. More we will discuss in the next class. Thank you.